And welcome back, and thanks again for joining us today on our special live stream coverage of the A7S III launch. I'm Christopher Robinson from AlphaUniverse.com and host of the Alpha Universe podcast. And uh, right now, my special guests joining us from Los Angeles are Justine and Jenna Izarek. Jenna and Justine, Justine and Jenna, thank you both for being here. Thank Hi. you. Hi. Thanks, Thanks for having so us. Much for having us. Oh my gosh. Before we get started with uh, with our Q and A, um, we're going to show some video that you guys have been shooting um, around the A7S III. So let's roll that video. And welcome back. And uh, so, Jenna, that was a video that you shot uh, with the A7S III, around the A7S III. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about that video and what you were doing. Oh, my gosh. I mean, there's so many features to really showcase. But obviously, like, the 124K was personally my favorite, that and the flip-out screen. So just trying to, you know, capture the essence of what I think Sony was trying to, you know, do with this camera and also what I wanted to show I just tried to, you know, do my best to to feature those things, and it's just I'm I'm so impressed, and I can't wait for the camera. And how long did you have the camera to to shoot with? Um, about, about a week. Uh, my sister and I went to Utah, and we kind of we were sharing the camera, so trying to figure out like how to create our own separate content and tell our own story was definitely a challenge. But we ended up shooting way too much content, and that's never a problem. And you were saying that the the 4K 120 was something you really wanted to showcase. Tell me about that. Tell me why that speaks to you. I mean, we love those good, you know, slow-mo action shots, and we were just at a place that was just so beautiful. So being able to really capture it, and I, I mean, it's just, it really tells its own story. It's just, it's so beautiful. And now that you can also record audio with the 120, since we do do a lot of vlogging as well, it's just, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And when you're shooting that way, you know, you're really kind of pushing what the camera can do. You're pushing, you know, the processor, you're pushing all of it. Did you have any issues with it while you were you were out there? You had an early production model, but did you have any issues? Um, not really. We were shooting out in like 110 degree uh, temperatures, so it you know it obviously was bound to overheat a little bit. But I did a test at home, and I was able to get you know the 30 minutes recording at 120. Actually, went longer. But outside, we I was really surprised. I said that I overheated before the camera did because it was so hot. So I was really impressed with it. Mm -hmm. um, in just a second, let's uh, roll the uh, the video from Justine's film. If we can get that queued up. This is the all new A7S III, 10-bit 422, 4K, 120 frames a second. An all new sensor, larger pixels for improved low light, an all new redesigned menu system, incredibly fast autofocus, full HDMI output, and more. This is the camera that we've all been waiting for, and guess what? We're shooting on it right now! And so that was Justine as Eric's video. And Justine, we were just talking with, with Jenna about her video. Tell me what you were doing. I realize you guys were sharing the camera kind of on the, the road trip together. Um, what were you trying to really showcase here? I mean, I think we both were kind of just, again, trying to make a really fun video. And it was, again, difficult because we did have one camera. So while we were trying to get really cool time lapses, I'm like, man, if we had another one, we could be shooting all of the intros and all of the other parts to the video. But really, I mean, I think our goal was just to go out and have fun and kind of just show that in the video, but also show the features. But again, the 124K is 
I mean, I love slow-mo shots and I'm so used to shooting with external recorders. So mm -hmm. we use like the Atomos recorder a lot to get like the higher quality bit rate and to get higher color. So being able to do that now, not having to have an external recorder and with a flip out screen, there's just so many things that it's, it's just really everything that we've been waiting for. Yeah, that flip out screen and having that touch screen capability on the flip out screen. I noticed you had the, the gimbal shot and you guys were just kind of doing a lot of handheld, a lot of moving around. How did that work? Good. Yeah, it was really great. I mean, I love like the Ronin S and it's so perfect. And especially we were using, um, oh my gosh, we had the, which lens were we using? The 12 to 24, the new mm -hmm. G Master one, which was so amazing. And then we had the, uh, one of the other 24 G Master ones, which was giving us such incredible shots that, I mean, we would just go back and like replay the videos out in the field and like, look how great this looks. Yeah. I noticed that in both of your films, you had a little clip of the full size HDMI uh, input which I imagine for you guys doing as much filmmaking and, and vlogging as you do is going to be a real thing. Yeah, I mean, I've bent so many of those mini and micro ones that to yeah. actually finally have a full <laughs> HDMI, I'm super excited about. And getting that 16-bit raw output is going to be so awesome. It's completely unnecessary for some of the YouTube stuff that we're doing, but you better believe we're going to do it anyway. No, sure. it's completely necessary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, can, can you have too much? I mean, is that, is no. that a th I don't think that's a thing. No, I mean, the only problem is like the YouTube uh, compression ends up just kind of downgrading all of our content. But I mean, you really can tell a difference though. Just, oh gosh, can we talk more about that 120? Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, oh, 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 wait, no, we need to talk more about Jenna's astrophotography because oh, I my. wish that I could take credit for it, but I can't stay awake past nine o'clock. So I kept falling asleep. <laughs> no, you were there. I mean, the low light capabilities of these devices, it's its unreal. Like, that's what I was most excited about. Like, when I knew we were going to have the review unit, I'm like, Moab has some of the darkest skies. Like, this is perfect. We unfortunately had a lot of cloudy nights, but we were able to, to sneak in a few really good astro shots. And, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even shooting in the complete pitch black van, like I know, I don't think I put it in our video, but it was completely pitch black and Jenna turned the ISO <clears throat> all the way up and you could still see me and it was crazy. What is it about Astro that you like so much, Jenna? I mean, it's just kind of, it's unreal because it's like you can see, especially in Moab, you could kind of see like the Milky Way with your eye, but just being able to capture it through the lens and the camera and seeing it from, from that way, it's just... I don't know. It's just unbelievable. It's just it's crazy what you can do with cameras and technology. Yeah, yeah. Having those larger pixels, I think, really makes a difference. And we had one of the A7IIs, and just kind of having that in, in comparison to the S3, I mean, there's no comparison, especially with the autofocus. Doing the autofocus test, I think that's what kind of blew our minds, just seeing how quickly that thing was processing. And especially the rolling shutter. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a couple of those tests as well. And it's just, it's just such a huge difference that, you know, people aren't going to maybe realize it up front, but when they start actually shooting and editing this content and seeing what it can do, it's incredibly imp impressive. You're talking about some of the testing that you were doing and talk to me a little, a little bit about your process, especially when you're, you know, you're on the road like this, you know, you don't, you're not working from a home base where you can say, Hey, let's set up this, you know, really boring static shot and see how it performs edge to edge, something like that. You're actually out making stuff as you're evaluating. Tell me about that. Well, we brought everything from home. So we packed up in a Sprinter van and drove a very long time to Utah. So we basically had everything that we normally would have at home. Um, but I think the first couple of days, we just kind of went out and just used the camera and then kind of figured out from there what we wanted to cover. We also sort of started then making a list. I mean, we should have done more planning, but it's kind of hard to plan for situations that you're not really sure what we're getting ourselves into. And plus, we've never even used the camera before. So yeah, I think a lot of it's, we tell our story in the edit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, Jenna, your process, like when, what are you trying to do as you're out there and, and kind of playing with the camera, trying to test it and also get really great footage at the same time? Oh man, I mean, I definitely think the Astro was a huge learning curve as well, but it's like what you don't realize is you're seeing this four to six second clip but what actually went into that was like eight plus hours. I mean, at least eight hours. You know, you let the time lapse, it's interval shots over a period of four or five hours. But before that, you need to do location scouting and, you know, you need to set up gear and you need to make sure that you know where you're going to go because it's pitch black out there. You know, you're, you're literally walking into the dark if you don't know where you're going. So just 
kind of trying to plan and then adjusting, you know, the first night we made some mistakes and we're like, okay, well, we're back out for, you know, another all nighter, like, let's get the shot. Just trying to plan, but then being able to adapt and adjust is, is just important. Yeah. I think we learned a lot about Astro and now, I mean, I think I would definitely be down to do it, but we need to sleep during the day because we were shooting all day long and then would have to stay up all night and then continuing to shoot for seven days straight. Uh, it was definitely a lot, but I mean, I think now we might have the Astro down and I'm excited to finally get this camera and I'll go back and I will be more help and not fall asleep. I also fell <laughs> while oh my I was God. Trying- Oh my God. Everyone, I made it a little more suspenseful in my video, but I really, I basically just like fell because it was so dark. You couldn't see anything. And, oh uh, and everyone's was like, so concerned about the camera. I was like, is the camera okay? I'm like, yes, I hit my head. Everything's okay. <laughs> but that was the night that we got one of the really good shots. So it was mm-hmm. all worth it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting I'm like, you know, kind of nodding as you're, as you're telling the story. I'm like, you wait, you fell. Oh my God. You hit your head. You know what? <laughs> yeah. yeah you- I had to save the camera. Oh, geez. <laughs> These are reasons why you have to occasionally look up or have an assistant, like, guiding you while you're looking through the camera, right? I mean, there, there was, was four, four of us, us but, yeah. you know. Oh, it geez. Was, it was definitely a journey. Um, Justine, what would you say about the camera surprised you the most? You know, before you got it, you got, you know, a little briefing. Sony sent it out to you. Um, what surprised you when you actually got to use it? I mean, I think the color, because I'm not used to doing like the 10 bit and, you know, in 422. So I think just having more of uh, of color to play with and also being able to have the, the 15 stops dynamic range was also amazing because I got to come home and edit all of this stuff on one of the Mac Pro displays. And it was just, oh, it was so beautiful. And, you know, obviously these are, they're larger file sizes, but yet compared to what I feel like I'm used to with the stuff, the output that we're getting on like the Ninja Atomos, I mean, we shot so much and barely went over like three terabytes, which I was incredibly surprised because if we shot that much externally, normally like we would be doing, I mean, I probably would have maybe been upwards of triple or quadruple that. So the file size I think was actually pretty impressive and how good the files still um, ended up looking. Yeah. I think when you when you see a spec or you hear about a file size and the, the number, it's one thing. When you actually see a really good file that open up, like you just said, on that really high quality screen, it's a it's an experience, right? You're it like, really is. It's it's a weird disconnect. Your brain's like, oh, I know what this is gonna look like, and oh nope, it looks different. Yeah, I brought so many hard drives thinking that we were gonna fill up everything, and I was like, oh wow, this is great. Shot for a week, and and <laughs> I still have space to manage. Right. Jenna, what was it? Uh, what surprised you most when you got the camera? Oh no, she's muted. Oh, I bet she's gonna say she liked the buttons. <laughs> uh, I don't want to. Still muted. When she when she figures it out, I think one of the things that she was really impressed with were the new I'm buttons. I'm so sorry. There you go. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. Um. No, I love, obviously love the buttons that they kind of took after the, the R4, but also the viewfinder, the new electronic viewfinder, it's so good. I mean, it's something that I feel like I never really, I mean, I used it, but not to its full advantage, but now with this new one and shooting out in like the, the bright sun, it's really, really impressive. But also the screen, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, cool, it flips out, you can see yourself. But we were using the screen for so many different angles and getting like so many different shots. It really was just impressive. You mentioned the viewfinder. That's something that we haven't talked about at all with with anybody else today. But I think it's a really great point because it's it's a you know a new viewfinder. It's super super bright, super high resolution. And for a long time, you know the the five people that were still holding on to DSLRs out there were saying, well, it's a different experience when you look through a DSLR versus when you actually have that EVF. But this mm-hmm. EVF is you know if if that was your argument, then I think it's probably kind of gone. If that was your last argument, right? Yeah, it's. It's very impressive. I mean, even at night when we were trying to, you know, using it to focus and during the day, making sure things weren't overexposed or underexposed, it was it was very, very impressive. Yeah, especially trying to get the, the focus on the stars. I mean, you were able to zoom in and really be able to tell a, a difference between, um, you know, each shot that we were taking. We're like, okay, there's a little bit of star blur there. Let's change some settings. So, I mean, it was just... It was crazy because we've never really done Astro in that sense before, like, you know, really um, going out and spending that much time. So it was definitely a learning experience. So I don't know. I'm I'm very excited for for trying it again. Yeah. I love Astro. And I I find um, 
I have to be careful in a situation like this because I'll talk about it too much and yeah. you know, not everybody loves it as much as I do. So um, I'm glad to hear that you're into it so at least we can have this conversation. But, for sure, for sure. You know, it's, uh, it's a really great experience and if you haven't done it, it can be, um, it can be really frustrating, um, if, especially if you have something, you know, a tool that's not especially well attuned to it. It can be really difficult to do and um, we we're talking about that great moment when you see a big file open up on your monitor same thing, it's the worst experience when you have a lousy file and you're like hopeful and you open up on your monitor and it's like, nope, not sharp, right? But when you, when you can really see when you have this kind of a low light capability, um, it's really game changing for astrophotography, especially if you've never done it before. Mm -hmm. Sure, and uh, so even before we went out, I filmed a sort of like my typical, like an unboxing kind of review video of another product. And so I was looking at that footage driving on the way up to Utah and I was just getting so hyped, just seeing those slow-mo shots that we like to do for product shots and just the low light, the lack of noise. I mean, there's so much that I love about this camera and I, it's like, I just want people to have it immediately just to really get to experience this. And now I'm so sad because all the videos that I shoot leading up to it just aren't going to look as good because we had to give it back. <laughs> well, you know, we were also talking with Chris Burkhardt earlier, and Chris was saying that one of the things about this camera is it makes him want to go back and reshoot everything that he has shot up to this point. Mm -hmm. So when when the camera's out and you and you have your own, you'll just go back and reshoot everything that you've done <laughs> to this point in both your lives. I mean, we oh, both ordered two boy. of them. We did. I, yeah, so we're, we're set. I'm just, I'm very excited. Um, I think it's it's just that 124K. I mean, I can't stress enough. We do so much slow-mo, especially with product shots. And obviously the in-body stabilization is a huge difference because uh, we do a lot of handheld stuff. So handheld 120 with the um, stabilization, like it's just, it's incredible. It's so smooth. It's so good. We've talked a lot about, you know, the, the slow-mo. We've talked about a lot about the Astro. And other other things. Um, what is this camera going to open up for you? If you had to say one thing moving forward, like what's it going to open up for for you? Starting with you, Justine. A packing less gear, because I will just need to bring the camera. That's it. You know, I'm not going to have to bring as many hard drives. I'm not going to have to bring as many lights. It's just it's going to save, I think, a lot of time, and especially the file size is going to be such a huge help as well. And Jenna. No, I mean I I think she nailed it. It's like you are just going to need less gear. You know, we have the camera, we now have the flip out screen. So if I'm not using the Ninja five, that'll be great. It's just, it's going to, it's going to be a more reliable device. Like if I only leave the house with this device, I'm going to feel fine. You know, one camera can get all the shots. And that new menu system, it's so much oh, easier yeah. to find oh, things, yeah. touch screen, like oh, the menu. I mean, it's what we've all needed for so long. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. <laughs> so I think, you know, you have a, a good product and you know, that you put out when someone says, what's the one thing and you can't stop saying things. Oh right? my gosh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a list. <laughs>